Hi, let's get started with creating floats, that is programs with Node-RED. Now that we have known how to install Node-RED, let's try to understand how a program is created in Node-RED. A program in Node-RED is created using something called as nodes and primarily there are three types of nodes. First one is called as an input node, then there is an output node and then there is a function node. Now input node, it's something which looks like this and it has or the job of this input node is to allow the data to be in or data to be injected into a Node-RED application or flow. It has at least one output endpoint on the right hand side represented by a small grey square dot. You can see that small grey dot over here. So input node is having this small square grey dot on the right hand side. You have to understand this. This can be used to input the data either from manual input, user input like adding some text string manually or putting time of our computer or even inputting the data or gathering the data from other services or web services like Google, Twitter, serial port, web sockets, even reading from sensors if you have connected to your Raspberry Pi and so on. Basically, this is the first thing that we have to have in order to create an IoT project with Node-RED. We have to have some kind of input which we are going to process and then send it over to the cloud. The second type of node is called as an output node. Output node allows us to send the data outside of a Node-RED flow. Now outside means where? You can have an embedded display connected to your Raspberry Pi on which you want to print the data or you can have the cloud services running on which you want to push the data or let's say you are using some kind of a proper IoT product like thingspeak.com onto which you want to put your data or onto which you want to publish your sensor data. Output nodes are used to send data to this kind of services and an output node looks like this having a gray square dot on the left hand side. This is important. So for input node, there is a dot on right hand side. For output node, there is a dot on the left hand side. And this input and output nodes have to be connected to each other. The third important type of node is called as processing node or also called as a function node. Processing node's job is basically to process the data. There are a number of different processing nodes available in the Node-RED. Along with that, you can also write down your own custom function block in which you can write a JavaScript program and you can process your information. You can change your information, you can alter your data, you can do any kind of thing with it. Ultimately then, the processing nodes have these square dots both on the left hand side as well as on the right hand side. In order to make things simpler and easier for you, the processing nodes left hand side is an input and therefore it connects only to the output of input node. It means you cannot connect the input of processing node to the input of output node. Therefore, the processing node has to have an input and has to have an output. The input can be an input node, output can be an output node and processing node can sit in between those two. Now that's, that's I think enough for theory. Let's try to create our first flow. So we have installed Node-RED on our computer now. So let's try to run Node-RED. Open command prompt and simply type node hyphen red. Node hyphen red command will start Node-RED and you can access it using the localhost address like this or your own computer's IP address or you can simply even type localhost. So you can just do localhost colon 1880 and hit enter. The Node-RED UI will be loaded for you like this over here. Now the first program or the hello world program in any programming language it's printing our data or printing some text. Let's try to do something like that. And in order to do that, we have to have an input node and an output node. If you see into this nodes menu, you will initially see a lot of different nodes and probably you will not understand the meaning of them, which is completely fine for now. We are going to see one after another, most of the nodes which are available over here. 
now let's put first of all or let's take this inject node first all you have to do is click it over here and then drag it over here keep the mouse button clicked and just drag it over to the flow section which is called as an inject node remember currently it reads as inject because it injects message into a flow either manually or at regular intervals but as soon as you take it into the flow it will read timestamp let me tell you what it is if you double click the input node then you can choose what kind of payload you want to enter payload means what kind of data you want to enter i will explain about this in bit more detail in our next video first of all here you can choose what you want to have timestamp means the current timestamp of our computer which can be loaded into it instead of that let me choose a string and let me call it hello world and then done so this is our inject or input node which is going to put hello world then we will take an output node which is this debug and uh, let's connect this output node to the hello world input node you can also double click the output node and choose what you want to print we always want to print the payload of our message therefore there is no change required over here and that's about it when you have to run your program all you have to do is click on this deploy button over here just deploy or just click this button once and the program should start running now i have clicked the deploy button and now the program should start executing now once the deploy is done the program is now running but as such it won't do anything because our input node is having a control button over here and it will only input this hello world into the program or into the flow when you click on this button along with that we also have to understand this is the debug node and therefore we have to look at the debug window when we are running the code remember whenever you do any changes even if you just move your nodes a little bit you will see there is a blue dot coming over here the blue dot is basically an indication that there are some undeployed changes in your flow so let's keep it like this and let's click on the deploy button once more you can see the blue dots are gone now this is the info tab over here switch to the debug message window over here so go into this debug message window over here you will find that option in this right top corner and now let's push this button hello world you can see the hello world message is now injected into this flow and due to this output node we are able to see it over here i click it again and you can see hello world coming in as many times as you click it now you have to also understand one thing let me just delete all this clear it if i double click the hello world you can see there is an option to inject automatically also without using the control button and there is also an option to change the type of input that you want let me choose time stamp now and let's click done as there are unsaved changes we have to deploy it first and then let me click this button now you can see the time stamp is injected now as such it won't make much sense if you are coming from python or c programming language but let's try to do something more with it let me remove this connection over here okay let's try to create a file using this timestamp let's see if we have a file node over here see there is a file node over here let's take it here now the output of timestamp goes to this file as you can see it has got two blocks it means it's a process block or it's a function block the job of this block is to write the files the output let's connect it to message payload or the debug window now let's double click this file block and here you will have to enter a file name 
Now let me do one thing. Mm, let's choose a drive letter. Let's say E. So let's take this address. E. <coughs> node file dot txt. Okay. Here you can choose an action. Whether you want to append to the file or overwrite or delete. Let's skip append to the file. And just click done. Now deploy this flow. And let us see if there is such file. No, there is no such file over here in the my drive or e drive. Now let me click it once. The timestamp is injected to this flow and the flow is or this particular node is doing some processing and then again injecting it out into the debug window. What processing has happened? If I minimize this window, you will see node file this text document has been created. If you open it, you will see the timestamp over here. Click it again and again and again and again. As many times as you click it, a file will be appended, means new entries will be appended into the file and we are able to see the message payload debug window over here. You have to just shift your perception a little bit for understanding node read. It's not something like a Python program. It's a flow based coding. So everything will happen based upon the events. You can see the contents of this file like this. Now see, in any programming language, creation of a file is definitely not as simple as having just three blocks wired together. Isn't it interesting? Let's see the function block in our next video.